Hi guys, I thought I would do this video for you Christians out there that like to witness and outreach the Mormon missionaries when they come calling on your door. Um, many of you find it a frustrating experience, it's quite difficult to engage these people and um, I just want to share with you something that I found personally over the years to be quite effective. Uh, I've been talking with Mormon missionaries since the early 1990s now and I found some things work, some things don't work, but there are some things that I find have consistently seemed to have an effect. So I want to share this with you guys. I would love to pass it on. I'd love you to take it away and share it with the next Mormon missionaries that you come across. Okay, the Mormon missionaries come knocking at your door and you tell them that you're a Christian. Instantly, in their mind, they look at you sort of right down there. And um, I know that they would never admit that, but the reason that they look at you as being someone right down the bottom of the pile, as it were, and themselves high, 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 exalted up here, is that these guys are striving to become gods. Uh, they also hold this priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood. They have two priesthoods, the Aaronic priesthood, which is the lesser priesthood, and the higher one, the Melchizedek priesthood, which the Mormon missionaries will hold. And, of course, ch people in churches don't profess to have these priesthoods. So um, the Mormons know this, and they often ask people, you know, well, where do you get your authority from? Because in their mind, other Christian professing groups have no authority because they don't have this priesthood passed on through the laying on of hands, which they say came from Joseph Smith and was passed on throughout the other members. Um, they, they say that in the early days of the church that uh, Joseph Smith was ordained himself to these priesthoods. First to the Aaronic priesthood and then to the Melchizedek priesthood with the coming of Peter, James and John who were, that, who were then resurrected beings that allegedly uh, showed themselves to Joseph Smith. So that's where it comes from historically. We're going to look at that in a moment. But the first thing that you can, can do with sharing with Mormons regarding this whole issue is take them to the Word of God, take them to the Bible and just show them some Bible verses that demonstrate that Christians do indeed have priestly authority. And it isn't something that's earned, it isn't something that's passed on through the laying on of hands. It comes directly through faith and belief and trust in Jesus Christ who is by the way, our great high priest, the book of Hebrews says. He is our only priest. He is our great high priest. And in fact, in Christ, who holds this Melchizedek priesthood, who is in fact the only person in the New Testament to hold the Melchizedek priesthood, um, only in him can we have any kind of authority. And it's by simple faith and trust. So, okay, turn them to the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 12, where it says, But as many as received him, that is Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Now the word there for right in the Greek is a word called exousia. Now that word means authority, so this could quite easily be translated. He gave the authority to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Simple. We have authority in Christ by believing and yielding and trusting in him. Another good scripture you can take them to is found in the first epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verses 5 to 10. Now, I'm not going to go into all of it because it's quite a large text. But verse 5 talks about a holy priesthood. Um, and it talks in verse 6 about he who believes in him, in Christ. Uh, verse 7, it talks about uh, those who believe, those who believe in Christ. And verse 9 talks about us being a chosen race and a royal priesthood. So again, this subject of priesthood comes up again just by simple faith in Christ, by trust and faith, by believing in Christ. Revelation chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6, uh, look at five, verse 5 for the context, but verse 6 says that Christ has made us to be a kingdom priests to his God and Father, 
To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Christ has made us to be a kingdom priest. You might want to mention to the Mormons as well that the Aaronic priesthood, the Old Testament priesthood, was fulfilled with the coming of Christ. The book of Hebrews, just read it, so much stuff about this. The law was a shadow of the former things to come in Christ, the fulfilment being Christ. So the old system, the old law was done away with. We don't have Aaronic priests these days. And the whole system that the Aaronic priests had anyway in the Old Testament is totally different from the Mormon structure today anyway. So they're not really restoring anything. Plus it was fulfilled in Christ. Christ is the only Melchizedek priest in the New Testament as well. There's no record of the early church having this Melchizedek priesthood. Yes, they were priests. Only in the sense that I'm a priest. And anyone who has faith in Christ, our high priest, is also a priest. Now after you've shared these scriptures with the Mormons from the Bible, you might want to address specifically their whole concept of the Mormon priesthood. What you can say to them is just, just share some stuff with them. I'll put some links down below with regards to this. Uh, from their scriptures, from their own scriptures, the doctrines and covenants. Now these are the extra revelations that they have on top of the Book of Mormon. Um, in these scriptures, they talk about the coming of Peter, James and John and the bestowal of the, uh, the Melchizedek priesthood on Joseph Smith. Uh, it talks about the Aaronic priesthood as well and how that was bestowed. Now what you, want to, what you want to say to these guys, they will not be aware of this, most of them anyway, most of the ones I speak to are not aware of this. That all of this stuff in their doctrines and covenants about the bestowing of these priesthoods was all actually added on later in the history of the church. And you can see this if you get hold of uh, a book of commandments, this is Joseph Smith Begins His Work, Volume 2. Um, it's... Uh, put together by Wilfred C. Wood and it is a Mormon owned publication uh, it's got some connection with the Deseret News Company who are a Mormon owned book publishing company of course and it's basically all just photocopy reproduction of the revelations as they were originally given um, it wasn't called the Doctrines and Covenants to begin with it was called the Book of Commandments that's how the revelations first appeared but later on when they were reproduced as the doctrines and covenants as the Mormons have now. All this stuff about priesthood was added on, all added on. And you can see this if you get hold of a copy of this book, The Changing World of Mormonism by Gerald and Sandra Tanner. Now these guys do a lot of in-depth research on Mormonism. Uh, sadly, uh, Gerald Tanner is, is passed away now, but Sandra's still going strong. These are ex-Mormons and they've done a lot of research and you can see the differences here if you just have a look this is a photocopy reproduction in the middle there of the book of commandments as the revelations were originally given and all this stuff here was all added all this is added to the, to the doctrines and covenants as they have it now all about the coming of Peter, James and John to bestow the Melchizedek priesthood all came later now you can actually get this book free by just going onto the link below there, you can photocopy, print up those um, those pages there and pass them on to the Mormons. And in fact, I did just recently with some of the Mormon missionaries that I met. And they were pretty stunned at what they saw, let me tell you that. Further confirmation that all of this stuff was added is the fact that even in the Book of Mormon, all this stuff about Melchizedek and Aaronic priesthoods and high priests and all this kind of stuff, it doesn't appear in the Book of Mormon, which of course came before the Doctrines and Covenants. So that sort of further confirms it, and yet this book is meant to be the fullness of the everlasting gospel. It doesn't have anything about the Mormon system of priesthoods in it. Now another thing that you can get hold of, which is very effective, which you can add to all of this, is this publication here, An Address to All Believers in Christ, by David Whitmer. And like the other stuff I just showed you there, you can get this on, on the internet. I'll put a link down below, you can print it up like I've done here. Share it with the Mormon missionaries. Very interesting read because David Whitmer was one of the original uh, witnesses to the Book of Mormon. He, um, his, his name actually appears, the testimony of the three witnesses there, David Whitmer. Um, he testified to the Book of Mormon being of God and all this stuff. 
But later on, he actually had some complaints because he noticed that the revelations had been added to. All of this stuff about priesthoods, the Aaronic, the Melchizedek priesthood, all added later on. And he complained, and he wrote this book, in fact. Um, and it's brilliant to share with the Mormon missionaries because it, it confirms exactly what we find in the original revelations there, the, the Book of Commandments, as the, as the revelations were originally given. No mention of the Aaronic or, or Melchizedek priesthoods in the Mormon priestly system. No mention of it there. No mention of it in the Book of Mormon. Confirmed as, as well by David Whitmer. So David Whitmer reckons that all of this stuff about priesthood originated in the days of Ohio in the mind of a guy called Sidney Rigdon who would get alongside Joseph Smith and expound some of the Old Testament scriptures and basically convinced Joseph Smith that really the Mormon church should have this priestly system and, um, and David Whitmer says that Joseph Smith would inquire of the Lord and as the desire of the heart is so so the revelation would follow. And Joseph said, I got a revelation from God that we need to have this two-class priestly system. Um, David Whitmer says, look, if you believe my testimony about the Book of Mormon, believe me when I write this and testify that all these revelations all added later on and that the church has erred greatly by adding to the revelations this whole error, he calls it, of the priestly system in Mormonism. So when Mormons ask you, where do you get your authority from? You could also ask them the same thing. Because David Whitmer actually says that uh, for, the, for nearly the first two years of the Mormon church, there was no authority, there was no priestly class, and that around 2,000 people were actually baptized into the church. And in fact, of course, all those people would have gone off and in turn baptized others unthinkable in modern Mormon uh, minds really because priesthood is so important to them because it's passed on with the laying of hands, the laying of hands and it goes on and on throughout the generations. So it's unthinkable to think that there's so many people out there as David Whitmer testified. So really this priesthood is really irrelevant. It, it, it isn't authoritative at all because there was no authority to begin with. Now, when you share this with a Mormon, I always back it up with saying, look, I'm not saying this to destroy your faith in Christ. You know, I want to point you to the genuine Christ, the real Christ, the biblical Christ, and that you can know him and that you can have a priesthood by simple faith and simple belief and trust in Christ. Not a church, not a system, but in Christ alone. As I say, the links are all down at the bottom, guys. Please share this stuff with the Mormon missionaries that you meet. I found it to be quite effective, and there's no telling where it could lead. You know, we really want to see these guys come out of Mormonism and out of this works-orientated system and to trust Christ and Christ alone for their salvation.